So do you have any projections in terms of uh, the, the presidential campaign as well as, you know, the uh, congressional campaigns? Well, it's, that's the challenge that exists. Is I think every one of these campaigns has got to run their own campaign. They've got to worry about themselves. And um, they, there's not going to be a cavalry to come in to save them like you typically would find with a presidential campaign, a well-funded presidential campaign, because this one ain't well-funded. So it, it is, um, if you're looking at predictions, my prediction is it is very difficult for a candidate for Senate to run more than 10 points above the top of the ticket. And to give you an example there, right now, uh, McGinty in Pennsylvania, I'm sorry, let me start. Trump trails Hillary Clinton in Pennsylvania by 11 points. Mm -hmm. And Pat Toomey, the Republican senator for Pennsylvania, trails by one point. You can say the same thing. Kelly Ayotte, um, well, Donald Trump trails Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire by 15 points, and Kelly Ayotte trails by five points. Those are just two examples, and I could go through every competitive state and give you similar examples. And it's the case in Wisconsin, it's the case in uh, Illinois. The only exception to this rule right now is Marco Rubio, where he's actually running 28 points ahead of where Trump is in polling. So that is, um, and then maybe 18, I think I just got that wrong, he's 18 points ahead of where Trump is, where he's actually exceeding the number by eight points. The, the difference I was going to say is actually um, the 28 point is George McGovern is a perfect example of this. George McGovern, who was a nominee for, Democrat nominee for president in 72, mm -hmm. trailed Carter by 28 points in South Dakota and lost his seat by 18 points. I and mean, it's just, you see these, these waves that are created that if we are not able to stop the tide that is occurring right now in terms of Trump falling so far behind Clinton, we're gonna lose the Senate. Now, I hope that's not the case. I am uh, I'm prayerful and I'm willing to do, and doing everything I can sure, to sure. try and help some of these senators to make sure that does not occur. But it is, I, I don't necessarily think it's a lost cause for Trump. I think those that are, I know both uh, two, I have a great deal of respect for Charlie Cook and Stuart Rothenberg have wrote, both written that the race is pretty much over in the last few days. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Things can turn around based on a debate performance or based on 33,000 emails that could, could become public between uh, now and November. But it's, uh, it's definitely an uphill, uphill climb. And that's why I think you are seeing, I believe the last count is now somewhere around 38 uh, Republican elected officials um, that have now said they either are not voting for Trump or voting for Clinton. And, and that's why you're starting to see some of these people separate, who are running for re-election, separate themselves. I mean, one good example of this is Mike Kaufman, a very solid conservative congressman from, from Colorado, is in a competitive seat. Mm -hmm. And he is running an ad right now saying no matter who wins, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, I will be there to fight them. Now, again, Kaufman's a conservative, he's an Army vet, he is somebody who loves America, and he is, um, you know, he's in a tough fight. He realizes he's got to be able to separate himself out. And I think you're going to start to see more and more of that if Trump isn't able to turn this campaign around. So at what point in time uh, does somebody hit the panic button in the, uh, uh, in, in the presidential campaign, assuming, assuming that things continue as, as, as they are? I mean, yesterday was an incredible day in, yeah. in terms of his – his statement, the the overall response to that statement, uh, uh, and uh, and, th and then of course you know there was a, there was another event going on that uh, my good friend Jeff Carrera wrote about, and and that is that down in Orlando you had the father of the terrorists. Yet that didn't that didn't get much exposure. Well, it would have, and it started yeah, to exactly. until Trump's statement, and that's really the challenge that exists. I mean, the same day. I mean, how many times, Steve, can you track a, a, a press situation in which Hillary Clinton has done something incredibly stupid, or her campaign has, and she gets bailed out by Trump then doing what he did yesterday on the Second Amendment? I, it's just he can't help but step himself. I, uh, I had somebody ask me the other day, uh, what would you do if you were Trump? And I said, I'd buy him a ticket to Italy, you know, <laughs> get him out of the country and just run the campaign without him. He's convinced these rallies are, 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 are positive. And look, in the primary, they were. They were incredibly positive. But you can only do something so much before it starts to grow a little. There's a reason why the circus only comes to town for a week, you know, and then it moves on to the next town. These rallies, have, they're great for him, and I know they're probably uplifting and giving him a lot of energy, but they're not helping him from the standpoint of running for it in the general election. And I think that's really the challenge that exists for him right now is because he gets up there, he is unscripted. He just speaks off the cuff, and he says things like he did yesterday regarding the Second Amendment. And I don't think he was calling for the, the murder of Hillary Clinton. Right. I just, it just, he can't help himself. And he says things that are, he thinks are funny, and it's it just, it's, you know, in a private situation, maybe it would have been, but that's not something you say on live national television. Yeah, I, I, I 
from my perspective, okay, I mean, I've watched it many times. Personally, I, I do believe that he was kind of suggesting that to that audience. I do believe that he was actually sending out the dog whistle. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it could have been clotted with some other things, but just the fact the way he was looking, I mean, you know, from my, you know, and, and also he just does this stuff. He throws these things out there. Uh, he makes, I wrote about it today. He makes these insinuations that are not bound in fact at all. A lot of people say. Nothing but conspiracy theories, one after another, and he gets hit. And, mm -hmm. and so how in the world can his campaign gain, you know, this is what I said, you know, basically how, like, like you said, how can it really gain force? And if you think that the media, I mean, from the media perspective, i got to tell you, from the media perspective, you know, I think the guy's wacko. I mean, I do. I think he's wacko. I think he's dangerous. I, you know, I don't know what he's going to say, mm -hmm. what he's going to say that's not going to provoke some world leader, you know, that, and get us into a predicament that is far more worse just by the fact that either he's trying to be cute or he's trying to bully or mm -hmm. he just doesn't know what to do. I hear all the time, you know, oh, well, he's not a politician, so therefore he can do this. Well, excuse me, but he wants to be a government official. Yeah. You know, and, and there's a translation that has to take place. That translation is that you've got to, you've got to show that you're credible, that people can trust you. And how he hasn't figured that out, or he has, I just don't know. But it's not just, you know, it's not media bias, in my opinion. It is just he's giving us all this opportunity, all these opportunities, mm -hmm. and it's one after another. And so when you believe that, oh, is this guy really for real? And he makes these kind of statements that are nebulous, but you have to wonder, is it re you know, is, does he mean this or that? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, you know, presidents don't, aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> That's right. And I think, you know, that's why the RNC has had, there was an article today that, about how many people have left the RNC since the beginning of this campaign. And they're in a difficult situation regarding uh, people who being willing to continue to work to elect him as president, because I think there is a lot of concern about that. And, you know, he's a, look, from a fairness standpoint, and I think my feelings on this one worked for Ted Cruz were very well known. Ted yeah. Cruz once spoke on national TV at the convention and said to people that it yeah. refused to endorse him. And that's, I, th it, I believe, I get asked about that a lot, and I'll just tell you what I say to everybody about it, is I think doing the right thing is always rewarded in the long run. And I will predict on your show today that in six months, you will not be able to find a single person who was at that convention that will say that they booed it. And will say, oh, yeah, I was with Ted Cruz all along. And right, it's, right, you know, right. there's all those other people standing around me that said that. But I, I, you're finding more and more people. I mean, in fact, in the last few days, there has been in the last week there has been nine separate articles written about written saying that Ted Cruz was right, and, and I'll tell you it is um, you know when you have the media and I I do believe fundamentally most members of the media are liberals. I also believe fundamentally they care about their job and want to be fair. And I'll tell you I have um, I, I, one of the really highlights of working on the campaign at the level that I did was getting to know so many of the people we see on TV every day mm -hmm. and get to know them on a personal level, and they are really good people who are not, they don't have some hidden agenda that they want to prove out other than that they just want to do their job and they really are some of the hardest working people I've ever met for not a whole lot of money for the jobs that they do. Right. And those people who are covering Donald Trump are not, they're, it's not like they're looking for things to report about. I think probably they would have rather spent their time talking about the Orlando mass murderer's dad that was there, but he just made it impossible for them to do that. And so now you move from that into a world in which you, you're right, you do have a lot of people who have serious concerns about Trump, who he is and what he says, and that's making it even more difficult for, and I'm going to keep using poor Senator Ayotte just because it's so easy and you know, I start up here in the upper uh, part of the Northeast and I can work my way all the way across the country. Her running upstream in this election cycle because I don't see a scenario in which Trump is able to put this back together. Maybe it occurs, but right now he is continuing to slip. And I'll tell you, when you look at it, Everybody who says that, oh, well, there's a lot of Republicans who are safe and, you know, states that, that are never going to go Democrat, all you have to do is look at Louisiana. 
and see what happened in the governor's election last time. When you have two candidates and one just fundamentally becomes disqualified in the eyes of voters, right, they don't right. care what the party ID is anymore. And who would have predicted four years ago that Louisiana would ever vote for another Democrat, particularly after, and we all kind of knew Landry was going down, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, that occurs, it proves it out, all right, Louisiana's hardcore Republican, and then you have a situation that happened last year in the presidential, I'm sorry, in the gubernatorial election. It just goes to show, we're gonna, we have the potential if he doesn't turn this around, at least to make it close, where you could see states like Georgia, and Alabama, and Mississippi, and Utah, and Oklahoma, where I happen to live, become competitive. And it is, I don't think it's likely, but you know, Democrats going into 1992 didn't think it was likely that the caucus would only win 10 states. And Democrats going in 1984 didn't think it was likely that Mondale would only win one state. And I hope we're not looking at the inverse of that because if we are, it's going to be a really, really crappy day for those of us who do what I do on the uh, right. November 9th.